So I was working on a, um, a feature for one of the apps we're building and it needed to, I needed to export uh, a bunch of data uh, that had nesting in there. So like a type that referenced another type via content picker that had a taxonomy. And uh, I, I wanted to use GraphQL in, uh, in Liquid, uh, but I could not. So uh, what I ended up doing is implementing a query type, uh, a GraphQL query type <clears throat> that basically allows you to um, use a GraphQL query in the uh, admin interface and Liquid. So it's using the same principle as uh, the SQL query or the Lucene query. Um, I would definitely make some improvement uh, of the editor, but uh, basically, so here I just put a link to GraphQL, but if I were to make a PR to OC, I would probably integrate GraphQL here and allow uh, users to create queries with it um, directly. Uh, so, for example, right now I already have one set up, so I can show you. Um, I have a type called a contact request, and uh, I wanted to, you know, export these four fields there. So you can you can run it in GraphQL, and you can see the output there. Um, but when you want to use it in a liquid template, for example, like like this, right? You could not. Um, so I will show you what it gives, uh, search queries on GraphQL. So if I run it here, same thing, should it shows the data, um, and you can use parameters. So right now it's not following, um, this demo is not following the GraphQL, uh, variables and parameters. Usually you would, you would define them at the query level here. I'm simply using. Uh, liquid to, uh, to output parameters. So anywhere you can put like something like this. So you can basically do anything uh, just like you can with SQL queries. Uh, I think this will work. Uh, on type, did I write it bad, wrong? Lower case. Lowercase. Oh, thank you. There you go. So you can you can see here it replaced the the variable. So it's not true GraphQL. It's a templated GraphQL with Liquid, but I made this as a proof of concept that it could work. So after I created the query, you know, I showed you how how it can be used, and uh, here's the page in the front end where I I display the output of that query. So if I'm to refresh and I can create another one for fun when it adds it there. Um, yeah, so that's about and it. So it's yeah. also available in the API REST endpoint? Yes, I believe if you if I go to role, I just pick any role and then core uh, manage, execute. So you can add permissions to it. And it makes it available, yeah, at the API level. Um, for my use case, I used it in a workflow HTTP response uh, liquid, uh, like the body of the response there. So I could output a file uh, as JSON format. Yeah. So, so yes, as you mentioned, I think the graphical ex experience will be much better than yes than the text editor because I mean you can type if you want, and you can also build it with the Explorer, so that's nice. Yeah. And and using Liquid for the GraphQL query, I'm not sure that makes sense because it has parameters. Yes, you can you can add parameters to the query so, and so use the GraphQL variable. The parameters should be used directly as parameters for the query instead of templating the query. Yeah. But it it's also interesting to be able to template the query because you can change the, the, the shape change. of the query completely. Yeah, in GraphQL, you cannot use the parameter anywhere. 
uh, or as freely as you could with liquid. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to play around with query variables. I haven't done that in a while. Um, one limitation I found was that the when you run a query, it always return an array. But uh, so this one, this one I had to return, but basically return a single object with data and an array. Uh, and if you were to have a, a typo in your query, so if you if I create that one, the the front end would get the error, right? So my second query, and I'm gonna go edit my page here. And you see, you can see the error. So it might be good or bad. I was not sure exactly uh, how to design it, but if I do a PR with OC, it would be a bit different. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's bad because we can assume that um, that when you execute the query, even in liquid, you can deserialize the object and, and get errors or data. So you can check if it has a data property or if it has error properties in the liquid template even. Yeah. So just yet, yeah, just deserialize the JSON object and expose it to the data. So because, yeah, because when you run the query, yeah, so, so yeah, definitely the, I see. Yeah, so so maybe the, the query itself should return this raw JSON object this way because you invoke, ah, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know. Yeah, the, the current query interface is hard-coded to return an enumerable of object or something like that. So uh, I made it work by just outputting the first one, I think. Should we break it and return an object? Good. Um, but yeah, that's all I had to demo. Uh, if you have any other question or suggestion, or if you think it's uh, useful that I spend a bit more time and do a PR to OC for this uh, feature, I would be happy to. What do people think? I don't use Orchard. So. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, one of the difficulties with using GraphQL is is that you don't you you tend to have all that um, all, all your queries in a spa or or some other thing. So, the idea of actually um, being able to predefine some queries for the people building the spas or other um, features makes good sense to me. Sounds looks good. Which you can already do with SQL and Lucene because we can expose them as uh, endpoints already. But what is interesting here is that if you don't want to use a, if you don't want to enable Lucene, or if you don't want to type SQL because you don't know what to type in SQL, maybe here it's better because you have introspection of the model. Like if I ask you to build this query in SQL. It will take you much longer to do it. Yeah, because because you have no idea <laughs> what fields are available here. It's auto descriptive, so you can still build queries more easily here. It's an indirection to SQL in the end, but it can be easier to build custom queries for the admin or for the front end. One thing I did not uh, was not able to do. Uh, I didn't do a bunch of research on it, but um, was to return documents. So. When you do run, uh, SQL, you create a SQL query, you can click a box that says return the documents. Uh, in this case, it might not make a lot of sense because you're basically writing the format of the data that you want. But I'm not sure you can use this with like the like build uh, you know, content items with it, with shapes and everything. You can just say, well, you don't have to, pro to provide this feature. You can just ex export the content item ID and let the, the user load the documents by content item ID. That's yeah, if they, if they need. Um, so that's one thing I wasn't sure. Uh, but for my use case, it was just to export some data uh, parameterized in uh, in a client side view, but you know, passing it from the admin. Yeah, I'm not sure it's useful to have a second load for the content item because, as you said, you can load everything you want here. At the same time, if you really want the full content item, can you do that? Could I? Could we? 
add uh, something to this to load no, no. it? I'm I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if yeah we might still want the content item in full because because some of our APIs they will want to display something yeah that might be interesting so so in this case it will be a convention like if you check the box you would say the GraphQL has to expose a list of IDs so whatever the object is containing but the result should be content item ID something yeah okay. and you just just list the data and then pick the content item ID property and load everything but it's still a second query it's kind of sad maybe there's a way to include the content item here like yeah. have a, a new um well, i don't know data loader or something that would output it for this use case so when you check it you get the actual content item so you can build uh you can build a shape with it maybe um yeah I was not sure about how to do it because you can you can render, so maybe that fixes the issue. I don't know. But what is contact request? Is a content item? Uh, yes, it's just a simple content item with tree field. So if I want to use, and it it looks uh, so. Wait, if I just enable this feature. What I would need, I guess, is um, to include like this format, because you know, contact request name text, whereas in the GraphQL query, it's just name. Like there's no dot name dot text. Okay. But anyway, something I, everything's possible. I think it's I, just. Yeah, I'm sure it's custom. Yeah, as you said, a custom loader or something to return the JSON document instead of. Custom properties. Yeah. But that's yeah. That's, yeah, that's I mean, it. I think probably GraphQL has that mostly for the the fields and the the things already. I so I think that should just be a matter of plugging it in. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, can you create a custom SQL query and then I, I assume you can. You can create a custom SQL query and then expose it through a GraphQL query. Even for even more indirection. Yes, you can do that. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the GraphQL query, I made sure to not implement uh, <laughs> the loader or the data loader. Is it? So I can't like run a GraphQL query from a GraphQL query um, <laughs> because then you get into an infinite loop, I guess, or you could potentially get into an infinite loop. But and yeah, this, yeah, and this question or everyone else is because we already expose all SQL queries as GraphQL endpoints also. I think so. So yeah, you create a query just, and then just all, query, the, all queries, they, they'll just say no SQL. So yeah, yeah. To yeah. Uh, I'm not sure oh, what I've put that yeah, as schema. Yeah, otherwise, you're but yeah. I think if you put something in here and it, yeah. it's documented, it, it will show up in GraphQL and in your GraphQL uh, schema. So that works too with this. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. Thank you.